The closest North American relative to the short-faced bear would be its cousin, the grizzly. And while this bear may be as fierce, there are many characteristics that are very different. 14,000 years ago, the grizzly lived on the same landscape as the short-faced bear, but they weren't competitors. One, quite simply, dwarfed the other. Dr. Matthews lays out three bear skulls that tell a striking story. Well, what you're looking at here is a skull of the giant short-faced bear. Here's a skull of a fairly good-sized grizzly bear, and this is a black bear. The short-faced bear would have been about uh, 1,200 pounds. This grizzly would have been about 500, 600 pounds, and this black bear, 200, 250 pounds. Walking on all fours, a grizzly bear is about three and a half feet tall. The short-faced bear was six feet tall. And when it stood up, this huge creature measured 11 feet. Even amongst other monsters, it stood out. A uh, short-faced bear is quite a bit larger, two to three times the size of a grizzly bear we'd see today. And the question always is why? Why such large size? Why did this bear evolve to be such a giant? Scientists theorize that the size of this bear made it a fearless hunter, able to kill very large prey unavailable to other predators. One such prey animal was the Jefferson ground sloth, an herbivore that weighed in at 2,000 pounds. Although slow moving, its massive size was protection against smaller predators like the saber-toothed cat or dire wolf. Like today's elephants on the African plains, the sloth's massive size made it difficult to kill. If a sloth was attacked by a short-faced bear, it would use its best defense, sheer bulk. You can visualize the sloth rising up on its hind legs to make itself appear bigger and more impressive to chase off a predator. The sloth outweighed the bear by more than 800 pounds. But once the bear stood up, they were nearly the same height. I can see these two animals rearing up, and you would have like a boxing match where they're both up there, they're swinging at each other. In terms of weaponry, this bear had a pretty amazing arsenal. Imagine the reach of these long legs and sharp claws. It would be like a boxer standing up with a super long reach. According to Greg McDonald, the sloth's best defense was to inflict damage with its long, sharp claws. The bear might be able to immobilize its prey by either slashing open their abdominal area or by crushing the sloth's shoulder with his powerful bite. When you think of how powerful its jaw was, it would have created a lot of force that could certainly, if it got a hold of an animal's limb, would break it very quickly with the, with the jaw muscles. With his shoulder broken, the sloth would be defenseless. 